All right, welcome to our topic here on net present value and internal rate of return, basically called capital budgeting. I want to do a summary of the homework. Excuse the attire, I actually had to unload some hay, a semi-load of alfalfa came in a little earlier than I thought, so I had to switch gears, get that done, now I'm back here. All right, so anyway, what we're going to talk about in this video is your homework from the previous week, and we're going to add a little bit to it this week, which brings in our new topic. Well, capital budgeting, in summary, is an, is an idea that you can know a value that you have to invest today, capital budget, and you can estimate probably a year or two, maybe even three years out, potential cash inflows or outflows. Then you can project maybe even out to 20 years. These long-term investments are the ones that usually require a lot of capital up front. So our example is an orchard. If you were to put an orchard in, it would cost you quite a bit of money to put it in. You would have a return that's going to happen over 20 years. So that's the focus of capital budgeting. So what we're going to do is today look at, what we, again, the homework last week, but I really want to talk about that the initial capital investment may not need to all come from cash. In fact, most of the time, it could be borrowed. So that's what we're going to add to this week. How does capital budgeting work when you add borrowing to the mix? Let's take a look. All right, going into your homework from last week, you had um, this uh, situation where you had a 20-year um, time period, you had a 5% opportunity cost of capital. We wanted to require this investment to earn $340,000 today. And there were some additional uh, factors of cost that come into these years. I already estimated what the cash flows would be from year one out to year 20. And then we've looked at the net cash flow. So again, time value zero, you're going to spend $340,000. And then each year, these cash flows come over. Down here at the bottom is where I did my net present value work. So that's going to be looking at the rate, which is the 5%. It's going to start with years one through the end, which in this case is 20. And then we're going to add to it the time value zero because there's no discounting to it. All this together is called net present value. When the answer is positive, that means the investment is worth the, the returns. The investment, excuse me, is worth the returns. Well, the idea of anything positive would be worthwhile. Now, what is the investment earning? Well, we do what's called internal rate of return. So if you equate the initial money up front and then all of the present or present value of the future cash flows, when those equal, that is earning 10% off of this investment. And so going across here, we're only requiring five. So of course, we're going to have a positive value and it's earning like 10%. Now those questions then are addressed here. The answer would be to do it because net present value is positive. And then the idea about the actual return is 10%. What would happen if the investment cost was 10% higher? So I raised the investment cost, brought over those values, and then I can just redo that again. So net present value, <laughs> we're gonna look at the same rate. And then again, we're gonna look at years one through the end. And then we're gonna close those parentheses and we're gonna add to it that higher initial investment and the answer is still positive <coughs> internal rate of return is going to be again x equals irr and then you can actually start with time value zero on that run to the end and it looks like that's not doing anything but dropping about nine percent so um let's go and look um and so the decision actually here would be to again uh, do it. Same thing we had before. All right, what if we pushed the new cost and what if the opportunity cost was 8%? Well, we know our internal rate of return is nine. Let's take a look at what happens. So if we again do the same thing equals net present value um, and we start with the rate, which is 9% in this case, not 9%, it is 8% in this case. Let's just plug in the eight. And then the time values are one through 50. And then we're gonna add again that investment. And I think when I know our answer will be, and so it looks like that we are just making a little bit of money still, internal rate of return. Um, we can take a look at that. Let's do that same thing again. I know what the answer is for this one, I believe. So in turn rate of return, the cash flows have not changed, so it's the same 9%. In fact, if we push those decimals out a little bit, it's an even 9%. So if you want 8% and this thing is earning 9, then you're still going to end up with a positive value. So the answer is you would still do it. 
All right, so these things are all looking like it's a good idea. However, it's this upfront cash that we just don't think we can really cash flow. Plus, we're already dealing with losing money a couple of years into the operation. So what we decide is to go take a look at borrowing money. All right, so here is the homework from last week. But how does this change if we add borrowing into it? Now, you're going to repeat this on your own work, but I'll show you a little bit about the homework that I've given you this week. So let's expand this out, get where we can see a little bit better. All right. Um, I've looked at this risk here and decided that this 8% uh, risk factor, 5% risk factor of the previous analysis, 5, 8, somewhere in there, we decided is just not really enough return. That this, There's a lot of risk in here, and we decide that we really want something like 12%. Now, we know it's only earning 10 and 9% back on the other side, so we know this is going to be negative. Um, I guess, for example, let's go take a look at that. If we pull that back up, and if you were to just jump over here and make this 12%, um, it automatically becomes negative. So everything becomes negative now. So we know that this only works because we're looking at an internal rate of return in 10 and maybe 9 if we push it up. So the idea of us looking at, get back to it, the idea of us looking at a higher opportunity cost is going to definitely bring in the idea of borrowing. All right, so we're looking at the same $340,000 up front. I'm going to leave my cash flows the same, except we're going to be adding in some outflows of principal and interest. And so that's going to jump us over to a new table that I built for you called a loan amortization. So here's the deal. For 20 years, we are going to borrow at 4.5% and we're going to use a $300,000 initial business loan. So I've already done the amortization here, which you'll have to do. So you can see that I started out just at time value zero linking that. I did a formula for my payment, got the right value. I just linked two to three to four to five. So you can see it just scrolls down. Principal or interest, I should say, is that balance times that rate. Principal is the rest of that money. And then I was able just to take all this stuff, copy and paste it down. Make sure on your interest that you lock that rate so that when you copy and paste it down, it doesn't start moving as you go. But once you get that, get a zeroed out ending payment at 20 years, you just simply grab principal and interest and bring those values in to our analysis. And so you may say to me, why are you bringing out principal and interest? We know the payment. We don't need those two. Well, if you're really going to manage this as a part of your cash flow, you really need to know the interest portion of the loan. So that's why I go ahead and break those two out. All right, so I want my principal and interest to show up. I just go over here and grab that year one, bring it across. That gives me my interest, and then that gives me my uh, values all the way down to year 20. Cash flow equals, well, I had to put in, I got 300000 back minus, but I had to put in 340000 So I'm still 40000 shy, and I also am 50000 shy, but I have to go ahead and make these interest payments. So I'm going to be less money up front, which is probably going to help me from a time value money standpoint, but that's going to bring all of these down. And so that means you're looking at 220 instead of 243, but you're paying off that loan. So we could look at different time periods. I just structured the loan as a 20 year note, but we could play with this and look at how it works out if we change this to maybe trying to pay it off in 10 years. But let's just stick with the 20 right now. All right, so there we go. I've got a new cash flow. This is the part that you're going to do in your homework. Let me show you what your answers should be if you do it right. Net present value, I've got this much higher rate. We know this wouldn't work in the other scenario. Let's see how it works here if we add borrowing to this. Take my time value one through the end, close the parentheses, go ahead and add that smaller outflow of money up front and looks like it's positive. That's a good sign. What's the internal rate of return on this thing? Let's go and find out. So IRR, time value zero all the way to the end and looks like we're in 13%. Go ahead and bump these decimals out a bit and let's just see if, yeah, 13.38%. I'm only requiring 12, so it's just making it. So what's the answer over here? Well, we bring in our answers to each one of these. And you're looking at high net, not high, but you're looking at a positive net present value. 
you're looking at a interest earnings higher than we're requiring. So the answer is, is that we would say yes, we would do this. And some of you may be thinking you're only making $30,000 across this. There's no way you would do this. Well, when it comes to just totaling the amount of money, we are actually bringing in $925,000. Here's the deal, time value of money. As these periods are one at a time, actually today's dollars, it's worth 30000 But from a profit standpoint, we are making money each year, and we're making more money than we're requiring, which is 12%. That's why the 30000 makes this a good decision. Again, positive values are what you're looking at, making money here, not the entire amount of money. It's kind of deceiving. It's all present values across the future. And as long as they're earning you more than you require, the answer is yes. You might think of that 30,000 as almost like extra money in your pocket because we're already earning the 12 that we're requiring. In fact, we're earning 13.3. What would happen if your, if your internal rate of return was exactly the same as the amount of money you require? The answer is this would become zero. All right, so we keep moving through here. What's the decision? The answer is, of course, yes. The answer is actual return. We've already gone over this. You can play with what it would be if the initial investment cost us 10% more. You can play with the opportunity cost, and let's not do 8%. Let's say that we need to 15%. You already know probably the answer, but go ahead and calculate what those values are. All right, so your homework is going to be this updated sheet. All the work's going to be empty. You've got to complete the work and get that turned in. But hopefully this shows you a little bit about capital budgeting and adding in the idea of borrowing. It really helps make capital budgeting sometimes a better decision, and it also explains why sometimes people have the cash, they have the money to invest, but based on the earnings and the timing of those flows, it may make a better decision to add borrowing to it to keep your cash flow. All right, thanks.